Start Battery Month at O'Reilly Auto Parts. Get up to a $25 gift card after rebate with the purchase of select Superstart batteries. Our professional parts people will test your old battery for free and recommend the right battery for your vehicle. For power, performance, and reliability, choose Superstart batteries only at O'Reilly Auto Parts. Oh, 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 O'Reilly Auto Parts. Ladies and gentlemen, welcome back to another episode of I Hate the Homies, man. Rock Teasies, who I be, episode number 60. It's your boy Griff, and I hate the homies in real life. And number 60, very simply, Chuck Bednarik. How about that? They named uh, the linebacker award after him in college, and he was a monster. How about that? You know. You know what? This is super, Dave. But you know what? I missed you so much that I'm not going to even argue about the number no more. I'm just going to let you have your number now. Well, I'm. I'm. Hold on. I'm glad you said that, Super Dave. Let's <laughs> let's let's think about how you were so disrespectful the last the last two episodes. You had so much to say while I wasn't here. Well, I'm well, I'm back. I'm. I'm, I'm, I'm no, no, no. You you stay right there, Commissioner. You just you this don't have nothing to do with you because in them last two episodes, I heard you, Rock T. I heard your plea. Hey, Dave, don't do that brother like that while he's not here. Right. He can't defend himself. Right. So I'm gonna just talk to you how you talk to your wife every day. Hey baby. I think you <laughs> You know I'm about to put my foot on your neck, right? So but before before I put my foot on your neck, I just want to say a couple things. A couple things. As I put the foot down, the first thing is... I'm a very little man. I'm the smallest man. In fact... Everybody watching and listening to this audio, I am in your car. I am in your house. I'm the new Alexa. You don't even know where I'm at. You need to just sit in your house. Hey, Dave, what's the weather today? And then I'm going to pop up on your desk and say it's 71 degrees in the morning, and it could be cloudy later. How about that? Don't you ever come for me, so you... So let Giant me get of a man, not <laughs> you gonna call me Fat Bobby Brown? Let me tell you something. <laughs> you gonna call me Fat Bobby Brown? Oh man! I get uh, and, and let me just reply this way: Fat Bobby Brown, Skinny Bobby Brown. I'm Bobby Brown, Dave. Who are you? Who are you? I'm in your house. That's who I am, Griff. You don't worry about me. I'm here. You understand me? Alexa, move over. Siri, I'm better than you, Siri. You're hey, Griff, I'm a little confused, man. You got to clear something up. I'm a little confused. What's up? So that first voice, the deep voice, did you say was that, that was... Was that Brittany Griner? Did you say that that was uh, Super Dave's wife? No, that was Super Dave when he get... Let me tell y'all something. <laughs> the homies ain't here right now. It's just me and you, Ebony. And All right, right man. Now, with no clothes on, I'm about to put my foot on your back. <laughs> All right. On that note, if y'all if y'all didn't uh get a chance to listen to the I Hate the Homies last couple of episodes. Griff's been out the country. He's been in Africa doing his thing, man. I've been doing, let me tell you something. I, first of all, y'all was holding it down. I really enjoyed uh, both the episodes. Uh, really, really good stuff. Um, and and <laughs> them voices is hilarious, right? I just got this Rodecaster Pro. I could do anything with it. There's a whole bunch of, hold on, hold on. Look, look, I can also, here go here go Dave. Here go Dave on on Halloween. In the tree, uh, I'm a small robot with no master. Is there any way you can give me two dollars? Griff got, got his toy. new toy, y'all. Griff got, got his new toy. toy. I ain't got, yeah, it's kind of dope. I ain't got what, Dave? Well, before you go to Ray Duggar, you got to admit what I said is true. We are a new addition. That's Ralph Tresvant 
right there with the glasses on. That's Mr. Sensitivity. Who are you? I'm I'm Bill. I'm Michael Bivin. Yeah, he don't do nothing. <laughs> you are, you know what? You and I be Bobby Brown. Bobby! <laughs> You absolutely right. You know what? In that order, go ahead. What's happening today, dog? I like hey, it. And I ain't listened to it that way. Go ahead. Go ahead. <laughs> we got we got a lot to get into, man. Of course, LeBron James' SB announcement was epic. You know what I'm saying? Mm-hmm. So uh, we're gonna get into what he said, and he's coming back for another year or two or three, in my opinion. Also, man, the wife goes viral for taking more than twenty thousand dollars from a joint bank account and hiding it in her own personal account. Oh, we got something to say about that. Then the lady that got stuck in Dubai, Tierra Young Allen. (laughs) (laughs) Enough said. We ain't even go. Listen, just stay tuned. You want to wait for that story if you've been up under a rock. Then we got the track star, Olympian Lolo Jones. She says that uh, being a 40 year virgin pretty much ruined her love life. You think? Yep. (laughs) I'm just saying, you think, Lolo? And then why these NFL running backs getting disrespected, man? Oh man, don't do Josh like that. Don't do don't 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 do the uh the league's uh leading rusher like that, man. And then of course, Barry Bonds, exclusion from the MLB Hall of Fame. And it, and for the still- first time, I like to say when we go to that, it's gonna be a different Barry Bonds. It's gonna be a lot, you know, the a lot of people. Y'all gonna hear it. I, I I really now I'm with him. How about that? Hey, come on, man. It is what it is. So hey, we'll get into it. Ray Duggar, let's start the show. Let's go. You done messed up, hey, Ron. Yeah, huh? I've been geeking for this broadcast. Got me in my bag, cause all they do is talk a lot of trash. Huh? Wait until I see him face to face off of this podcast. What you gotta say now? Check the facts, don't have a wrong stat. Oh. Rock to he a genius as a sport, make Ricky smile, boy. Ricky smile. Super Davy Holly come up short on like it's cowboys. It. Always controversial, grip call out plays, no rehearsal. Got me talking all in circles. I hate the homies. And Griff be laughing like it's funny. But they never bet no money. They my mans, but they throw me. Ah, I hate the homies. All right, y'all. So first of all, before we get started, we got to shout out to our amazing friends, McDonald's, which sponsors this episode, brought to you by McDonald's and a quarter pound of cheese. So uh, we'll get into that here real soon. But right now, LeBron James, King James, SB Awards speech announcement. It was a little different from his big announcement he made when he went to South Beach to join the <laughs> Miami Heat. This one right here, I seen it coming from a mile away, but the only thing that I would have changed about it is, well, we're going to play it. Are we going to play it real fast? Right here. Go ahead and play it. And I know a lot of experts told you guys what I said, but I'm here now speaking for myself. In that moment, I'm asking myself if I can still play without cheating the game. Can I give everything to the game still? Truth is, I've been asking myself this question at the end of the season for a couple years now. I just never openly talked about it. I don't care how many more points I score or what I can or cannot do on the floor. The real question for me is, can I play without cheating this game? The day I can't give the game everything on the floor, it's the day I'll be done. Lucky for you guys, that day is not today. How about that? You ain't like that? Let me let me start, please. Please let me start. I know sure. you guys. I don't know if you watched the SP. Yeah. This is the whole thing for me. LeBron and LeBron fans are going to hate me, and they'll probably hate us, which I don't give a damn. But the truth is, this guy is freaking needy. He's a woman, man. He wants to feed his ego. There was no reason for him to do that on that stage. And there was no reason for ESPN to allow that to happen on the stage. You knew, I knew, Brock knew that he was coming back this next year. We knew after the season when they got swept, their asses swept by the uh, by the different Nuggets, he was going to be back. What's the announcement? The announcement is if he retired. He's not retiring. He's coming back. That was not the stage for that, man. And this guy, we, we wonder why people always say, I talk about LeBron and try to compare him to Michael Jordan. Michael Jordan didn't ask to be the GOAT. Michael Jordan wanted to prove everything on the basketball court. LeBron wants to feed. 
his ego and he want every one of us to feed his ego and give him respect and i'm not doing it i think he's a top five nba player of all time but that's it for me he's not important i would like to say that that you know that was his time he won he he was just what you guys heard was a clip from the sbs where his wife brought him on as the goat respectfully um and 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 what he won was the best performance it was when he broke uh kareem Kareem abdul jabbar's record so he had the chance to that was his chance to talk. It wasn't, I don't think he did it because, all right, now, as soon as I get the mic, I'm going gonna, I'm gonna to let them know something. Plus, listen listen to this part. I liked it. I like this part the most. Oh, my God. I can't believe you like this. Listen, you can, you can love me. And I know some of you hate me as well. Me? But the one thing you will always do um, is respect me and appreciate uh, the way I approach the game and what I've given to this game. Period. Period. But I he, mean, but listen to what he said, Griff. He said you're going to respect him. I ain't got to do a damn thing to respect him. You got to respect him. You a sports dude? Don't do that. No, you you you, you taking like, away oh, all credibility. On. You a like, proper he, sports but he's announcer. Telling me, he's telling me to respect him. You don't have to tell anybody. If you're the greatest, Michael Jordan is the greatest. He's not looking for everybody to respect him. He let hit. He let he lets his game. I People mean, it's a new, actors. you sound like the old dude on the porch. It's a whole new, he's saying, respect me by leave me alone. While you on Twitter and Instagram and and, and, and black Twitter and everything That's else saying what said, you want bro. to, no, just not. respect me. No, he's not. Rock how, Rock, how did you take that? First of all, look, Dave, you was just a straight hater. You know what I'm saying? <laughs> Let's start off with that. You just a straight hater. Now, let me explain to y'all why LeBron James took advantage of this opportunity to make this uh, announcement. This is the era of social media. LeBron James is the biggest brand in sports. Believe that. The biggest American brand. Because Messi is the biggest brand in sports out there in soccer. Yeah, yeah, yeah. But LeBron is the biggest American brand in sports right now. Absolutely. And it's genius on what he's doing. He's taking advantage of recreating himself because remember, he's not just a basketball player. He's not just a social media influencer. He's not just say what you want to say. He's an actor too. He's, yeah. he's got, he's, he's an actor too. You know, what? he's, he's, he's a businessman. He's, he's, a, a, actor, he's a producer. He's, he's a, producer. a business mogul, a business mogul <laughs> straight up. So Magic every Johnson, time he got his cues from magic and, look, them and he just, he know what he's doing. It's brilliant. It's just, we ain't got to like it, but it's brilliant. He's always taking advantage of the spotlight. Everybody was watching him. Everybody knew that he was going to have a speech about, is he going to retire? We are, you said it, Griff. He ain't retiring any time. He, he got about no. three to four more years left at least. Now three but to four he strong. he took a page from Tom Brady. <laughs> <laughs> he took a page from Tom Brady. And he knows that after next year, LeBron going to say the same thing. Well, yeah. I'm going I'm to I'm spend some time with my family. I'm exactly. going to think about it. Then he's exactly. going to come back again and say, I'm coming back. Then he's going to play with his son. Then after one year with his son, it's going to be, that's going to be the, now that's going to be the real announcement. Does he want to play two years with his son or is that one year going to be enough and he's done? We'll see. But if he's still dropping 25 plus points a game, man, he's going to play till he's 50. I'm not talking about it on the court. I know what he can do on the court. But did any one of us, after they got got their asses swept by Denver, did any one of us think he wasn't coming back to them? We knew he was coming back. Yeah, why wouldn't he? Why didn't? So then why make the announcement there? We all knew. Because it. you got the you got the time. It's when it's ABC, it's ESPN, it's the ESPYs. That's the Oscars, they Grammys, they Stellar Awards, they Hello. everything. Okay, Hello. Do, you the, do you see other guys Hello. doing the same thing? No, Super you Super Dave, did you hear everything I just said? Hello, I just gave you the reason why. Super Dave, this is Satan. You're a hater. Come back home. That's what you can do. Just come home. We don't. Don't bother Rock T and Griff with all this blah, blah, blah. It's just me and you, Super Dave. You're going to be my best minion. <laughs> He's a minion. <laughs> let, me, let me tell you this. Let me tell Super you this. Super Dave's a minion. 
I got the peanut gallery laughing in the background, but listen. <laughs> after they won that bogus championship in the bubble, I'm not gonna argue about that. Man. I mean, I know, no, no. You feel how you feel, I feel how I feel. But even at the end of that, when they held when he held that trophy up, he was asking for respect. You guys gotta give me my damn respect now. Again, you're asking for it. You should have to ask for anything. If you are great, people will recognize you as being great. I'm saying he's great on the basketball court. He's not better than Jordan. He never will be better than Jordan to me. But off the court, he's needy. He's like a woman. He is not King James. He is Queen James. Definitely Queen James. He you know, Rob T, excuse me a second. Super Dave, what I love about you being my favorite minion is that you are a hater in your soul. It ain't just it ain't just outside hate. Like it's it's what we want down here in hell. We want we want people with horrible spirits. And I mean, way to leave the pack. I hate the homies too. <laughs> That's fine. I know I'm going to hell. So I, I'm not even I'm not even worried about I rebuke that, that for you. You're not going to hell. And let's get off this subject. Uh he, two out of three people like we not we understand what you're saying. You saying that he need the attention and he need, but but Super Dave, it is 2023. Attention is on him and it's gonna be on him till the dude die. He but is he's actually asking for the grip. He's asking for it. We know the tension's gonna be there. No, he's saying I'm if you you ain't gotta love me, and I know some of y'all hate me and, and whatever, you know, but you gotta respect me. You gotta respect me. And Jordan I, wasn't saying you gotta respect me. You're right. You're absolutely right. Agreed. Agreed. And, I, and I don't respect him. I respect him on the basketball court. We know you court. don't. I we, don't. You a whole LeBron hater. They and out there. It's fun. Another championship, except for that 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 bogus NBA Cup they're gonna do next year. That's the only championship he will get. Oh man, I heard y'all talk about that. Thank you. That sounds I ain't gonna, awful. I ain't, I'm not <laughs> even gonna, give, I'm not even gonna give Super Dave Thank my time you. on that. No, nope. let's move on to the next. Actually. Uh, Rock, why don't you throw it to our awesome friends at McDonald's and stop playing? Oh, no, we're going to definitely hit that McDonald's situation. But coming up after the McDonald's situation, man, we're going to talk about the wife that goes viral for taking $20,000 out of her husband's account and saying, put it in hers. And like, yo, it is what it is. But yes, the quarter pound with cheese. Let's talk about it. Y'all going to give me my respect. I hate the homies podcast with yours truly, Rock Teasy, man. Available wherever you get your podcast. Brought to you by my friends at McDonald's, man. Featuring that double quarter pounder with cheese. Mm, mm, mm. Made when you order and worth pulling up for. Griff, talk to him, dog. Ooh, Rock, you already know that double quarter pounder with cheese is my lunchtime go-to. You understand me? It's, I already know it's going to keep me full. Plus, uh, the double quarter pounder with cheese just ain't a meal. It's a whole experience. You understand me? When you start looking at it, you go, I don't know which part to bite first. I start looking at the left side and the right side. And I know my double quarter pounder with cheese was made fresh because I can feel that heat coming through the bag. How about that? Now, Dave, you a real burger expert, homie. Yes, I am. Real burger experts know exactly what they're getting when they pull up to the McDonald's drive-thru. A double quarter pounder with cheese, buddy. Fellas, looking at that juicy double quarter pounder with cheese is almost as good as eating it. Rock, almost. Almost, dog. I'm right there with you. Almost. <laughs> so get a drip that's as fire as your drip when you order a double quarter pounder with cheese at McDonald's. I wish you know what I wish we did the Dubai story first because I know where I would have sent her. I want to send her to Dubai. Well, we're gonna get into that. We're gonna get into that. So, so obviously, this couple got into an argument because she took twenty thousand dollars out of their joint bank. No, 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 that wasn't an argument. The argument was because the husband got some mail that said there's another account that has $22,000 in it, and he had to approach her with it. And yeah, he went viral, and maybe they shouldn't have went online and blah, blah, blah. But let me tell you something, ladies and gentlemen. What is the whole, why are we married then if we doing that? 
Like, I mean, I, I wish it was a nicer way. I hear what she's saying. I'm a woman. I need to be taken care of. But that's what your husband was going to do. That's what your that's what your man. That is our intent to be one instead of two, so we could come together and we could help. Obviously, when I hear a little clip like that, I have to b- b- have a lot of empathy for the lady. Maybe in her last relationships before she got married, uh, you know, maybe she got evicted because she lived with a dude and he kicked her out and made. You know what I'm saying? So this ain't. This come from something else. You know what I mean, Rock T? This ain't just uh, a lady being a thief, which is what I labeled it in the sound, uh, the thief lady. But I believe that this is a deeper situation because why would you feel like you need to steal what's already yours? Yeah, it, it's one of them situations where piggybacking on what you said about either bringing luggage or baggage into this new relationship because she was burned in the past or just being insecure because you already expecting there's something else going on in their relationship that she the feels secretive. very un- insecure about. Yeah. And she feels like the end is coming soon. So before the end happens and she's has nothing, she's going to make sure she has something. So it's, it's something else going on. I, I'm the same way. I don't like to just, you know, there's there's two types. I ain't of gonna murder the lady, express. right? You, you, <laughs> yeah, you but can it express the opinion like of what you think. <laughs> you can express the opinion of what you think of what we just heard, but then there's a bigger opinion because there's two sides to every story. There's actually three. You got his, you got hers, and then you got the truth. So, but but at the same time, man, keep that stuff private, man. Keep that stuff off social media, and y'all handle it like grown men and women. The only thing I agree with you on is keeping it off of social media. That's number one. Number two. I can't say what I really want to say, but this B, I don't care how you look at it, and you know what B means wow. to me, took 22 k out of the family bank account. And you know me, you are Griff. I know y'all are being so. If y'all wives did that, y'all would go crazy because $22,000 is missing. We ain't talking about $100 or $200 or 1000 to go buy something. $22,000 was missing, and he found it out. And she doesn't work. That's the other thing. She doesn't work. He well, here go the best part. $22,000 went missing, and now we found it. <laughs> so we can't. Now what we, we going to do? <laughs> what we going to do? So, man, all she well, had well, to do. Look, well, all she's hiding it because you're thinking of we may not make it down the line. So you want some security. Well, get your ass a job. That's your security right there. Because whatever <laughs> money you make, you can, you can hide that money. But don't take it out of the family bank account because I eventually find out, and that's going to lead to a divorce. You stole from the family account. Yeah, you so can't look past that. that's agreed. And on that part, I feel like yeah. so. I'm trying to be empathetic to the lady, right? So here's a lady. If you just now tuning in, here's a lady who has been moving over years has been moving money, just taking a little bit. Maybe I mean, you know, we all know how long they've been married. So let's just say $600 a month, $300 uh, twice a month from the, from her, from her joint account with her husband. And she was moving it somewhere else. Now I know a lot of women whose mothers have taught them, you know, keep you some money on the side and you don't never know what to do. But when you get married, you post a, leave the things that your parents told you and leave the thing like you know so i just all i hear is a hurt lady who is uh you know and 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 it was really a nine minute clip we only heard 30 seconds i i heard enough like i think the rest is just why did you steal because what you know so f that f that woman i don't feel sorry for that damn woman i feel sorry for the guy i mean (laughs) hold on a second dog hold on that's if y'all wonder who that is up there, that's Super Dave that just said that. <laughs> Super Dave, I, I love your stance on marriages. I actually love how you put your foot on your wife's neck. That's that actually makes us and the guys down here crack up often. Um, and, and I just want to say you're doing a good job for us up there. Just keep it up, my guy. Keep it up. We'll see you soon. So on that note, man, we're gonna we're gonna we're gonna we're gonna transition real fast. But as my wife and I always say on, on the Perfect Pair podcast, that 
Listen, we got three accounts. We got our joint account together, Thank and you. we and we both communicated and agreed that she has a play account. I got a play account. I like so, that. Yeah, yes. but but we we talked about. No, it. but that's a talk about. Yeah, that's what I'm saying. Dave is saying yes. That's what. But that's something. If he would have, I don't know. If you, that's if, what I got. I got what Rock has. That's the whole point. So what you got with your wife? I well. You guys don't believe I have a wife. Yeah, in the first we, we place, still, so that's still that's work. still a question to be tell us, tell, been us answered yet. tell us how you handle your finances at home. <laughs> this should be rich. <laughs> this this should actually be awesome. Let us hear it. I'm a yeah. Let me. How do I mute no, myself? No, so I, no, listen. We have a joint account, just like Rock and his wife. She has her fun account. I have my fun account. There's no money. Where it's hiding. Where if I'm taking money out of the family account, she can see that. Right. If I take twenty two thousand dollars out of the family account, she will see that. Absolutely. And I have to answer those questions. That's why I said I can't feel sorry for the woman. I'm feeling sorry for the guy because his wife was stealing from him. At the end of the day, that's what it was. At the end of the day, she is a thief. Um, there's some mistrust there that need to be addressed. And that Negro is a hope- thief. That Negro is a thief. Yeah, I said she. Yeah. She know. And this this ain't her first rodeo. That's what y'all need to know. It start off small. First is now and later's and and starbursts and what you call it, <laughs> Cheetos and Barbie dolls and then, you know what I'm saying? Yeah. Like, this she not new to this. There's though. levels to this. There's levels to this. My, my, cook, my cookies are missing. Where did they go? <laughs> but but see all that hollering and hooping and hollering that she was doing. You know, she couldn't do that in Dubai because there's another lady that's stuck in Dubai. And we're going to get into that. Her name is Tierra Young Allen. And uh, we're going to tell you why she's stuck for breaking the rules and the laws of Dubai for hooping and hollering. That's next, man. Stay tuned for that. He got a toy. He got a toy. All right. So, Griff, I'm going to let you take the lead on this one, man. Let's talk about Tierra Young Allen and why she stuck in Dubai. Hey, yo, what up, man? Rock T up in the building. Listen, the Golden Arches have a lot more than your favorite French fries that we all love so much, man. There are also Golden Opportunities. In partnership with the Thurgood Marshall College Fund, the McDonald's Black and Positively Golden Scholarship Program is dropping $1 million in scholarships for HBCU students every year. That kind of cash helps keep bright minds on the yard. You can get all the details at mcdblackscholars.com. You know, we we talked about, I've been watching this. I've been overseas for the last couple of weeks um, in Africa, actually, and I read it. So this lady who, uh, she owns trucks. Um, she has a transportation company in the States. And, you know, just like everybody else in America, I want to go splurge in Dubai, go, you know, get my Dubai on. Well, she went out there and allegedly she got into a car accident with her rental car. So when she went back to the rental car place to get her purse and her ID and some stuff that was in the car, this is just what I'm reading. This is just (laughs) the, the man said, you can't get your stuff. And she said, it's my stuff. So he got loud with her and then she won full black woman on him. And she got arrested because in Dubai, it is a law that women cannot raise their voice to men. And and here here's the here's the sad part about Americans going overseas. Everywhere ain't America. Everywhere ain't Not everywhere. Dubai. You gotta respect. You gotta respect. You gotta read up. You gotta respect people's rules and laws. You yeah. can't do stuff that you do in America because every place ain't a democracy. And and what I'm and 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 I'm sure she'll get out soon, but she kind of needs to sit there because and then and then we're not just talking about reg- we talking about these people from Dubai, these people from the the Emirates that area that whole area of the world where you know it has been known for decades the things that they do to women the, the way they treat women is sheep sheep are treated better than the women in that culture so if you know that just from hearing things and reading stuff on tiktok and everything else why would you go there and think it was okay to just say what you want to say that's 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 my thing i travel 
every other month at least internationally. I watch my mouth. I know I'm a loud dude. I know I'm a big dude. And I make sure that I'm not disrespecting nobody ever because guess what? What you don't want to be is locked up outside of your country. All right, so I'll jump in next. Um, yes, you got to know the laws of the land, especially when you go into other countries on how you should act, react, behave, whatever you want to see, call it. And, and put this out there. She's a sister. She yeah. is a sister. Yes, now. She won for a black girl. We know what for a black girl. We got mamas and aunties and sisters and cousins. Okay, Stop we, it. listen, in our culture, we get that. We understand that a if lot of our If you get amazing, loud with me, I'm going to get loud with you and we going to be arguing. Yeah, we got we got we got we got some amazing queens that that has that has something to say. But I don't want to put it in the box. I don't want to label it as like what you said, Griff, full black woman on him. Now, from a from a comedian perspective, okay, cool. That's right. Funny. I'm stereotyping. I'm yeah. stereotyping. But don't right. stereotype our our amazing women. You know what I'm saying? Because that's what the world does. <laughs> they think, oh, black woman, here she go, attitude, angry black woman, all that, whatever. But, but it's there, true. There, there's some non-black women that do the same thing. So what you gonna okay. call it? What you gonna call it? No, so, I, I actually retract that statement. Yeah, I'm, no, I'm just I'm yeah, just giving that. I'm, I'm no, giving man. us. No, because angry black woman is too strong because she was a black woman who wanted her stuff back. And then she was getting yelled at by a dude with, with a different accent. So now all she could do is uh, communicate the same way he was communicating with her, which was getting loud. Right. Except so look, on that continent, getting loud with a man will get you locked up or beat up. Like, that's the other rule. And, like, they, they have laws and stated that they could put hands on a woman and ain't nothing gonna happen to them so again Damn. you gotta so, know what so you I, I get it man look now now let me finish up by saying this i get it you get frustrated you mad you angry you want to get your point across you want people to listen to what you're trying to say and nobody's really is is respecting that so that can cause a person to get really irate there's a there's a way to do things and there's a way to talk there's a way to present yourself and you know, but let's let's not go so far and say it, because here we go with the whole black woman thing because that's what they're gonna say. They're gonna be like, see, there she go, see, there they go, there they go again, there they go. No, again. but not it ain't even a there she go. If a white lady would have got loud, she'd have got locked up. Yes, if an Asian no lady would have argued with a man, the law is a woman can't argue with a man. It don't have not, it don't have a race right. <laughs> next to it. Right. A female is not allowed to argue with a man in that continent. Keep Dave, go ahead, ass. super Look Dave. At Dave, Dave, Keep love it. Keep my ass over there, please. <laughs> I'm not. I'm not gonna backtrack. I mean, I know what you said, Rock, but. Our sisters do do that, a lot of them. And what she got is what she deserved because she didn't do her research. As Griff just said, she didn't do her homework. You better research where you're you going. Better. You better. <laughs> you, you better because you can't do some of the things you're doing over here in the United States somewhere else. Here go, here go an example of doing research. I go to South Africa all the time, and people say, Griff, how many shots do you have to get to go to South Africa? Well, in South Africa... You don't have to get shots, but somewhere in middle Africa and not even middle Africa it's other countries in Africa that you have to get shots where a mosquito carrying malaria could take you out. But mm -hmm. South Africa ain't one of the places that's called doing homework. That's, that's called that's 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 inviting somebody to South Africa and telling them what to read online and through other people and knowing that one of those things is you don't have to take shots you see i did my research and right here is showing me the things you shouldn't do while you're in dubai and i really want to go to dubai i really do i mean dubai's nice i've been there before it's, yeah. a, it's a bit pricey it's I, know, pricey. I know it's pricey i know yeah. the crime is low yeah. you think <laughs> <laughs> It's almost if, no crime if there, you, boy. If you steal something, they cutting your hand off. All you got to do is see an uncle like this. Uncle. <laughs> uncle, what happened to your hands? Well, you know, um, taking an orange when I wasn't supposed to, and you only got to show me one handless dude for me not to steal nothing. <laughs> what What are some of the, the rules over there, Dave? Well, you can't be drunk in public. Oh, yeah, they don't do alcohol like that in those no, countries. That's right. You can find right. yourself locked up 
Well, what's her name? What's her name again? Pierre. Yeah, yep. you can find yourself locked up. Pierre Young. Uh, I like this one. And Griff, I'm pretty sure you would rock like this one. You can't take photos of people without their explicit permission. How about that? That part. What you won't be is paparazzi out there or photo bombing. Now, I might get arrested for this. You can't just swear. Oh, yeah, I'm going to jail. <laughs> I'm going to jail. Oh, you, you can't, no profanity? Yeah, no profanity. Uh, no, absolutely man. not. They have undercover cops. And you oh, might man, be swearing to, to other undercover cops. I'm going to have to I'm gonna have to keep well, my, my wife at the hotel. My, then. my white homeboy was performing in Egypt comedy, oh. and he was like, it's a little big brother. Watch what you say in Egypt. And he said, it'd be people in the audience that go back and tell a yeah. police officer. Like, so you just got to watch what you say, man. Everything ain't funny. And I'm a comedian. I think everything. <laughs> so, Griff, so, so you get booked to go perform in Dubai. You, <laughs> you going to accept that booking, dog? Yeah, because they got money. But what I'm also going to do is be very strict down the line. You know, Rock T, when you go to a college, they give you a rules of things you can't say. They don't want you to say this, this, and this, Absolutely. or they'll keep your money. So what yeah. you're not going to do is go out there and say, I don't care what they say. I'm going to say you won't get the rest of your money. What, so what's, what's the what are the what what's are the rules? Line? When he came on, uh, when he came I ain't on, scared uh, you blankers. <laughs> I am. Look. <laughs> and then it says you is two more left use your you use your left hand uh this might seem like an odd rule but muslim culture the left hand is used for body hygiene and is therefore considered unclean you should never shake hands or greet anyone with your left hand and you yeah. definitely should be caught eating with your left hand Mm. What if you left? What if you left handed, and that's how you eat? That's what I thought. Left handed. If you left handed, do not go to Dubai, because <laughs> <laughs> according to them, something is wrong with your whole being. So they're gonna be trying to eat right handed. They're gonna be trying like, to... <laughs> "You missing your face?" <laughs> <laughs> and the last you got one everywhere. Okay, what's the last, the last one? one? You're not. A, you're not allowed to wear a bonnet. Good. I'm like. Oh yeah. Yes. Well, you lying. You just made that up. You stupid. Oh, hey, they need to make that a rule everywhere. Look, you're so stupid. Look, Rock G got excited. First of all, ain't nobody wearing no bonnets in Dubai. <laughs> you said, you're stupid. They air don't hey, even do that. When me and my Stop wife it. go to Dubai, I'm telling her, hey, look, list of things to do. And I'm going to go through all that hey, list. And then I'm going to add look, that. No bonnets allowed. No <laughs> bonnets. That, that was a sister that got locked up, right? Yeah. You mean she to probably. Tell she didn't have a bonnet on it. No, I mean, you know, according to Rock T, I shouldn't stereotype everybody, <laughs> but I'm just, hey, I'm just saying, that's, dog, that's just, Griffin Super Day right there, ladies. <laughs> I, I will say this I hope this is an example, and I hope people are really paying attention to not only just watch what you say and in other places, but be very aware of your surroundings yes like that's just number one like yeah. you 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 know and i and i know a lot of educated black women who could have who who that could have been different with but again how about this because that's their law maybe that man's first reaction was like how about you shut up yeah you know what i'm saying and maybe that just took her Oh, who is you talking to? Oh, she don't know. Hold on. Let me get the rule books. That's probably how it happened. That's, pro that's probably how it happened. I mean, like, you know what I'm saying? She going in there. Hey, can I get my stuff? You can't get your stuff. Well, I want my stuff. Shut up. <laughs> you <God. laughs> What you're not going to do is tell a black woman to shut up. I don't care what country you in. You about to get a whole bunch of, hey, you about to get this. You about to get... First, you about to get air grabs. You, got, you, you about, about to get, get what? You about to get the weed. And taken another off. thing, you about to get. Hey. And, and, you and they over there, hand. they over there trying to understand what is that sign language? She don't know saying? what like, he's saying. You know what? Call the police. I don't know what's happening right now. I'm being attacked. <laughs> All right, man. So we 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 were to find out why the NFL is disrespecting some of the coldest oh, running backs in the league, man. and not paying these brothers, and some still not even signed on the team yet. Stay tuned, man. That's coming up next. Hey, yo, what up, man? Rock T up in the building. Listen, the Golden Arches have a lot more than your favorite French fries. 
that we all love so much, man. There are also golden opportunities in partnership with the Thurgood Marshall College Fund. The McDonald's Black and Positively Golden Scholarship Program is dropping one million dollars in scholarships for HBCU students every year. That kind of cash helps keep bright minds on the yard. You can get all the details at mcdblackscholars.com. We got running backs. I'm just going to throw a couple names out there, man. Former running back of the Dallas Cowboys, Ezekiel Elliott. Former running back of the Minnesota Vikings, Delvin uh, Cook. Oh, yeah. They ain't got a job yet. They ain't ain't even on a team yet. Why is Ezekiel? I thought we talked about this before, and we were saying that they're going to wait till the I don't know, training in August or what, but it's about to be August in a couple yeah. weeks. Training camp starts, summer's training camp starts this week. Yeah. This week. And Ezekiel Elliott and Dalvin Cook are not on, and especially Dalvin Cook. Yeah, he put up some yards. You put him, he's not on a roster right now, but that ain't the problem with the running back situation right now. They're getting disrespected. Right. From the top to the bottom. They're using these guys up. They're chewing them up and spitting them out. And I'm going on a list of guys right now, just the, the, uh, not even free agents. We're talking about guys that have been stuck with the franchise tag. We're talking about top-notch running back. And what are your guys? I'm so your mad guys. about – I'm so mad that Josh Jacobs, who led the NFL last year in rushing, and then Saquon Barkley, who had a phenomenal oh, contract yeah. year, yes. and, and Pollard, who – I thought the Cowboys was going to make him RB one that these dudes is just only about. And and let's be careful how we say just and only, but only about to make $10 million for the season or something. But but you're not guaranteed your future. You're not saying two or three year deal. You're saying one year, you're saying a one year deal and let's see what you got. Cause if we we don't like what you got, then we can spit you out. But you said it right. Running backs go through the most. They knees are man. I saw OJ Simpson and OJ Simpson's legs is so Deion Sanders is right behind him. Deion Sanders got a, a hard limp, dog. That, oh, Earl, that, oh, Earl Campbell. Oh, Dang. Earl Campbell. Earl Campbell even, is a wheelchair. Earl He's Campbell needs a while. skateboard. Yes, but see that I guess the problem is we look back at the history of running backs. What are y'all doing? That Earl Just Campbell kinda, joke, he's trying dog. not to let the Earl, Earl Campbell don't, slide. Don't disrespect Big Earl like that, man. We love him. <laughs> One of the greatest running backs of all time, if not the greatest, after well, Barry he, Sanders. He makes sausage and he's shaped like it now. How about that? <laughs> that sausage me good, Damn, dog. Grim. Big Earl. Damn. <laughs> Damn. <laughs> Damn. <laughs> he he oh. was great. He was great. No, Grim. Earl Campbell, but I'm saying my point is, when you that great, now I look at the Tennessee Titan running back as big as he is. When Derrick, is his legs Derrick, gonna Derrick, fail? Derrick, you know, Derrick, Derrick Henry. Henry. When no, you know, Derrick the, Henry. Derrick Henry is probably the last of our old school type running backs. Absolutely. See, this is this the is Eric why these Dickerson's, running backs. The 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 they ran high. Yeah, they they got thirty carries a game, and 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 they was you don't have that no more. It's it's a two back tandem now in the league. Yep. Yep. And that's why these teams aren't paying the running backs. Cause it's like, Hey man, you're a part-time player. Yes. You're an important position on the team, but, but you're a part-time time. player because we got two of you now, not but just made, one. But who made them part-time because we're talking about, you just mentioned, we can go to the history of Walter Pate, uh, Emmitt Smith, Barry Sanders, but Daniel Thomas, all these guys were top notch first. These guys were, they hop, they held, they were hauling the rock every single time. You didn't have a guy that was coming in number two. These guys on first through third down. Yeah, Marshall Falk ain't had no backup. Mar- Marshall Falk is another one out there. Same, it goes, back to, this, it goes Allen. back to this era of being soft, including the coaches. Because the on, coaches dog. are like, hey, okay. I would rather have bring fresh legs in every three or four plays. Right. And, and versus wear down my one running back. And risk getting hurt or injured when I can have two and let them share the load, which I'm like, okay, but what I, I can always see the strategy about? there. But I'm like, come on, man, if you got a dog, feed your dog. Feed your dog, okay, man. Yeah. That's what the bottom line. What have you heard about running backs? They get better as the carries go up throughout that game, and as you're beating up that that defensive line, like Emmett used to do. I know it was the offensive line. Offensive line played a big part in this, but I'm saying, but by the fourth quarter. 
when he was getting one and two yards or, or five yards in that first and second quarter. Then it'd be seven. Then it'd be and, 11. Then it'd be nine. Then it'd be on. 22. Then, exactly. Yeah. I mean, I don't understand it. I mean, I do understand it because when, when these guys get over 300 carries, and I've, we've seen this through, uh, over the years, when these guys get over 300 carries, they're not the same running back the next year. They're not. No, of course not. You know what's funny to me is even in Madden, I think I just start, like, even with Josh, I think I might put another running back at shotgun oh, when Josh ain't it. in, but I'm not going to run him now. I'm just letting Josh rest a second. Like, but overall, we just from a, we just from an error where running backs was appreciated. I don't think they appreciate it as much. I think they love these slot wide receivers now, like more than a running back. Like well, they I put, think, they putting the wide receivers in the running back position, like Debo exactly. Samuel. Exactly. So it's like, why, why are we going to pay this running back all this money when we got wide receivers that we can put in the running back position and spread out the offense on third down, third and longs, and so on and so forth. Right. It's, it's funny. Saquon Barkley is not getting his money. He could be holding out. He may not be ready for the Cowboy game. He could be holding out till then. Oh, y'all, like, not, y'all the first game of the season? The first game against the New York Giants. But I don't see nobody doing what Le'Veon Bell did a few years ago with Pittsburgh. Oh, he you just – yeah, You can't sit out as a running back because once you're done and sitting out that long, you're really done. And, yeah, and, now they, and they, they will nowadays, replace yeah, your, your you with a punter with some thick quickly. legs. Yeah, but I think – look at Saquon Barkley. He got – he got homeboy paid. He got the quarterback paid there. The quarterback was Jones? okay. Jones. Oh, that, yes. Yes, he, he did. Paid. That boy from Duke. <laughs> yes, he, he got, did. He got him paid. When you look at uh uh Josh, Josh Jacobs, what he did with the Raiders, he was that offense. He, yeah. he, according, to, according to why they let go of Derek Carr, he yeah, was that's, the that's, offense. That's disrespectful. It's and disrespectful. Tony, and Tony it's, Pollard, he, I mean, he works for Cherry Jones. He signed. He signed that that franchise yeah, he, tag. He's going to be disrespected whenever Jerry feels. <laughs> <laughs> I mean, totally. He, he better yeah. get used to that. <laughs> Look, he, was look, he was looking for a long term deal, but Jerry said, "You better take this deal right here, boy, right now." Boy, and, and called yeah. you boy, and he was like, "You know what, Mister Jones? I'm gonna go ahead and yes, sir. Be, yes, sir. Be, I'll take yes, that rock." <laughs> <laughs> but Josh Jacobs, 25 years old, the leading in Russia last season. He, he's so young, right? They treat he's him so like young. he was 33. They won't, they won't give him the money. They would not give him the money. I think they came close to a three-year deal, but he yeah. turned that down with the with the with the Raiders. But Saquon Barkley, all these guys, they better come together because some at some point, I mean, as a running back community, if you want to get paid, just like what what um Lamar Jackson was trying to do with uh with Baltimore. Yes, he did. He got paid, but you got to get your other brothers involved too, like the Patrick Mahomes, the other uh Burrow. You got to get the people who got money money. to say, hey, yeah, I'll take less money so dot, dot, dot can happen. Fix my... Look what Joe Mixon did with uh, Cincinnati. And that's the... I saw that. I just... Because guess why? We're going to be good, and I want to be here, and I don't want to be replaced... When uh, some new rookie running back come in and win because I already set it up. So, you know, I I think a lot like the writers guild and what the actors are doing right now, you got to stand up and let everybody else stand up. You know what they said in the paper yesterday about the writers, Hollywood said, we will starve them out. And Damn. that's what, and I know, and that's Damn. why the actors was like, "Hold on, now, though, you can't starve people <laughs> like, like we will starve them out and make them come." And the actors was like, first of all, let's be a little respectful." And the bottom line, if you and and let me just say this about the Screen Actors Guild and the Writers Guild, um, what's happening right now is basically Hollywood is saying, "Hey, Dave." Well, you're gonna be a background and you're gonna be a background person in the next Mission Impossible. We're gonna give you a thousand dollars and then we're gonna record your face and then we're gonna play you whenever we want to for perpetuity, which That's is forever. infinity. Till you die, you will never get another sin again. 
because we already have your image and likeness and we just going when we need somebody to walk past we're gonna have dave walk past you ain't even know you was in the new eddie murphy movie you are <laughs> and that's and that that's dirty and disrespectful so yeah, shout out to they, the actors saying no nah, no nah, they've been nah. doing that for years though they yeah. just finally yeah you know so and that's the same way the nfl is doing with the running backs now because of what, and what that's my point out, what that's we're finding out now is yeah i'm gonna use you up this year but i got another young guy <laughs> that's gonna be a cheap cheaper amount he they're dealing with what we, what we deal with in real life what we go through in real life if about to bring you in for you a comedian that get four thousand dollars a show i'll come in and do it for six hundred dollars <laughs> And Dave, you mentioned something about being used up. Well, let's talk about someone that has not been used up. Lolo Jones. I like that. Oh, I like that. Dog. <laughs> Boo. Lolo says, man, that being a 40-year-old virgin ruined and killed her love life. And as I said at the beginning, you think we're going to talk about that next. <laughs> Hey, yo, what up, man? Rock T up in the building. Listen, the Golden Arches have a lot more than your favorite French fries that we all love so much, man. There are also Golden Opportunities. In partnership with the Thurgood Marshall College Fund, the McDonald's Black and Positively Golden Scholarship Program is dropping $1 million in scholarships for HBCU students every year. That kind of cash helps keep bright minds on the yard. You can get all the details at mcdblackscholars.com. You like that, that team? I like that team. That was an amazing segue. I didn't know where you were going. (laughs) All right, so former Olympic superstar track hurdler Lolo Jones, who's 40 years old, says being a virgin killed her love life, and she always wanted to save herself for her husband. And she wanted to use her virginity as a gift to her husband. And it backfired on her because now nobody wants to date her. I like to simply say, Lolo, you're 40. You're fine. You're athletic. You just haven't found the right dude yet. You've been messing with a lot of she in this business. She in the, I mean, you know, she would. She around dudes all the time. That's hella fast and got gold medals and see her in the Olympics and catch her in different countries and be like, Lolo, what's up, though? <laughs> like, she just ain't met. You know, she just ain't met. She, all she does is track. So she just, so she's around the same people, equipment trainers, fitness trainers, fellow athletes. Or that, that's just not her pool that I believe that she need to be in. That's just me. But I don't, I know a lot. My homeboy, John Gray was a, a virgin till he got married. It can happen. It can happen. I wasn't. But for a 40 year old woman, I mean, you know, I mean, down there, it's probably gotta be a haunted house with all the ghosts in there, <laughs> all the spider webs and stuff and spiders. And, Cause ain't nobody been in there, man. Ain't nothing in there. There you go, Dave. Talk about it, Dave. We love it down here. You one of our favorites, Dave. I ain't gonna lie. What's it look like down there again? <laughs> it's like a haunted house. It's like hey. a long, it's like that long hallway in the shining. <laughs> where the kids are at the end. Red rum. Red rum. <laughs> it ain't Red even a hallway rum. though. That hallway, yes. Yeah. Because of cause you can the hear arc- echo. You can because nothing's been in there. I mean, that's fine. That's good. I mean, for her to be a virgin. But damn, Hello. Does anybody want to see what's down here? <laughs> I'm down here. <laughs> Hello. Hello. I repeat. So let's be let's be honest, man. First of all, that's a beautiful thing for Lolo. But let's be honest. The word gets around. You know the homies be talking. Everyone that yeah. has went out hey, on a date You ain't gonna mess with Lolo. Lolo. That's the bottom line. Hey, Everyone yeah. that's been out on a date with Lolo. Let's be honest. They felt yeah. like they were going to be the one to finally to, to make her to make her come out the, to lose the virginity. Right. So when that didn't happen, the homies are like, "Hey man, how'd it go?" Say, "Man, it what's up? Is, is that for real? For real?" Yeah, man, ain't nothing happening there. Don't holler so at, don't the holler reputation gets around that no, Lolo is serious. She for real. She ain't doing nothing until she get married because I didn't tested it out. It ain't happening. So the reputation Dang. gets around. So now. The the fellas are probably like, man, well, I don't even want to try. I ain't even gonna try to shoot my shot. 
Well, and now it's somebody with her name on it that is going to be exactly who she waited for. It's just not going to be an athlete or somebody in that. Uh, it could be an athlete. Who knows? But I was hope I was hoping that her and Tim Tebow would hook up once upon a time because he was oh, doing yeah, the same thing. <laughs> oh. <laughs> yeah. Wait a minute. Wasn't it another one in the no, green? I'm, I'm giving you the person that they need that she need to hook up with. AC Ooh. Green. AC Green from the Lakers back in the day. With well, the dry is, Jerry yeah, Girl. Yeah, with the Jerry Girl. With the Jerry Girl that ain't never had activator in it. <laughs> can you can you picture them? Neither one oh. of them had sex. And they have that one night. Yeah. It's probably like a little low. Hey. When the last time you had somebody down here? It's so <laughs> it's so vast. It's like <laughs> Dubai. <laughs> it's just it's all track and field down here. It's a whole Olympics down here. I just saw uh, Bruce Jenner when he was a dude run past me. He keep there missing. go Carl Lewis playing. over there singing the national anthem. <laughs> <laughs> oh, man. Lolo, Lolo going to be okay. That's all I'm yeah, saying. Lolo going to be, fine, be okay. But, but okay. she's taking, she taking it very hard. She's taking it very years hard. Old, I mean, at that point, I'm, I'm wanting somebody a little bit younger than that. I think uh I think um the homie who I was just talking about, who did I just say? What's his name? Pastor John Gray. I think uh -huh. he was 38 when he got married. 38, 30. Well, Lolo, Lolo Jones, her new nickname kind of got around to be no 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 Jones. <laughs> <laughs> it ain't have no no. Okay, no uh -uh. no Jones. Her name, uh uh Jones. But don't we all have we all have daughters? Don't you when you want your daughter to be a virgin like this? I would have wished my sons was virgins like Absolutely. this. Keep it real. Let's 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 talk about that. Let's stop. I'm applauding Lolo. Yeah, let's 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 For talk 40 about years old rock. Come on, don't applaud that. No, you can applaud look, it. Look, I'm applauding. Now look, I do hope and and I and I and I I, I hope she could have found something that a, a guy that respected her needs earlier before now, before that she's 40. But, but it's why not too late. I mean, 40 the Bible still... says in your latter years. Look at look at here. Let's just take us. Here goes some grown men who've been in radio for decades. We got our own podcast. We on syndicated shows. We are happily married. We got great. Our kids are awesome. This is all in your latter years. This ain't happened when we was twenty four. Of course, we wanted a syndicated show when we was twenty eight years old. But the Bible say. And later in life, later is gonna come. So I don't think Lolo, she's gonna find her somebody that's gonna love her for her. And when he get down there, he gonna be like, "It's all mine. I'm so happy. Thank you, Lolo, for thank you for saying no, no, so many times. I love it down here. It's beautiful. And she I appreciate love, you. Hey, is she gonna love him to death? Whoever hit that first? Hey, dog. You gonna put that foot on the neck? <laughs> do it right, yes, sir. And, and does it right, he won't have to worry about anything. She will never leave. Never. She never. Has, no, that is real. Yeah, <laughs> that is. That's never. real. <laughs> <laughs> Somebody gonna go up in there like Barry Bonds did, boy, with them doggone. <laughs> Somebody gonna be hitting some grand slams after that one, man. You <laughs> stupid. Speaking of Barry Bonds, we're going to touch on this real like fast and get on up out of here. He's on it. Riff, this he's on man it and his segues today, hey. he is jamming. <laughs> it's somebody, it is. So, uh, Barry pretty much is still trying to, he's still baffled on why he has not been elected to the Major League Baseball Hall of Fame. And we get it. Steroid use, allegedly. He was never found guilty of it. But we're going to talk about that next. Hey, yo, what up, man? Rock T up in the building. Listen, the Golden Arches have a lot more than your favorite French fries that we all love so much, man. There are also Golden Opportunities in partnership with the Thurgood Marshall College Fund. The McDonald's Black and Positively Golden Scholarship Program is dropping $1 million in scholarships for HBCU students every year. That kind of cash helps keep bright minds on the yard. You can get all the details at mcdblackscholars.com. You know, the thing is, is that, you know, people have to understand something is that the fact of is that I was vindicated. I went to the court. I was in federal court and I won my case. 
100%. Where is the vindication of me and my own sport? That's what bothers me. And you know what? I never looked at it from that angle. I do remember him being in court and steroids, and he, he was found not guilty. And to treat him, I always said this about Barry Bonds. If he wasn't taking steroids, then he was sticking something in his eyeballs because the ba- the baseball was so slow to him that he was crushing it. And then, I mean, you could see from when he was with the Pittsburgh, when he with the Pirates, the Pirates yep. yeah. he was a little fat. He was a little guy. He <laughs> was, but, he, but, he had, but even then, he, he was out there looking breath. like Victor Wembanyama. <laughs> <laughs> Yeah, he was a little young, a little little thin youngster with yeah. the Pirates. But let me, but he, let but me, he still had great success at that time. With let me tell you something exactly. about Barry Bonds. Exactly. Let me tell you something about Barry Bonds, man. Barry has always been a dog. Okay, and when he, like you said, with the Pirates, he was a dog. And when he got to San Francisco, his head got three sizes bigger. Literally, he muscled up. And listen, you can. Hey, we all work out. If you if you stay in the gym a couple hours a day, just lifting weights with no kind of taking no kind of um, Dave ain't doing steroids. Right. And he been you the same still, size since I know him. You can get big and you can gain mass muscle being clean, but um, everybody thought because the, because Barry Bonds went from this skinny little player to this muscle bound dude, and he's got to be taking steroids. Right, and I'm like, bro. Barry Bonds been killing it even when he was skinny. You're right. And he went to court and he was found. That's not the guilty. bottom line right there. How so about OJ? OJ guilty, walk around here hey, doing what he wants to. Look, not you guilty. Brought, you brought this dude to court because you thought he was going to be found guilty. Right. So he was found now guilty. The dude Leave should alone. be in the doggone Hall of Fame. Period. Leave him alone. Bottom line. It is what it is. It ain't Pete Rose. It ain't betting. It ain't, it ain't. You know, uh, the the whole thing was he was in an era where all them boys was getting famous for home runs. Mark McGuire, Sammy Conseco, Sosa, Seiko, Sammy Sosa, who now looks like a whole like white that. woman. <laughs> That's Sammy a whole. Sosa, like what you doing, dog? That is a whole. N- <laughs> 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 I don't even Sammy know how your skin. I don't even know how your skin do what Sammy Sosa's skin did, <laughs> but, but, but he was. Major League Baseball was mad that they were becoming a sport that was dominant at the time because everybody was watching McGuire and Conseco and, and Sammy and Sosa Bonds. and Barry Bonds and and then to find out Roger Clemens and and the, and the other boy the Schilling. pitcher Kurt yes Schilling. Kurt Schilling there you go and to find out they you know this is the ma- this is major league baseball being mad major league baseball stop being petty let hey, that I'm man go, I'm go, look I'm a, I'm going to say this and this is this is the elephant in the room. Did Major League Baseball turn their back? How when about they that? Knew, How about when they, that? When they knew some players was cheating, because awesome. for the purpose of what you just said, allegedly media, everybody is watching our sport. That's right. Even people that don't like baseball, they watching to see if Sammy Sosa and Mark McGuire are gonna hit a home run tonight. If Barry Bonds going to home run tonight. If Rafael pa- Palmer going to, it was. Man, it was like the Lakers in the '80s. Man, it was it the was, greatest dog. show. It was on dog. Baseball had got popular again. Wait, so, so take... now, so now the media is adding pressure to Major League Baseball. They say, "Hey, you know, you got all your players that are cheating, taking steroids, allegedly." So now they got them. Now Major League Baseball allegedly got to say, "Oh, we about well, we to gotta, do something about it. We got to do something about it." And I'm not saying that's what happened. I'm just saying. You know what? <laughs> yeah, Barry Bonds. I mean, no doubt. He looked like he took steroids. I, I mean, I know he <laughs> I know he didn't get busted for steroids, but it did look like it from where he was with the Pirates to coming to the Giants. I'm not going to take anything but away. But what do you stay here? He, okay, okay. Yeah, granted, he got big. It was a big difference. That that had to be because of dot, dot, dot. But what do that got to do with hitting a ball? I agree. What, ste- I what steroid make yeah. your brain see stuff smaller? Like, that's all. That's my only question. 
and everybody doesn't get big because Rafael Pomero also took he it. He was, yeah, he, that's real. He was so, a little fella. He was he so shaped like Robert Ory. He did it. <laughs> Look, he did I'm no expert. Did. I'm no expert in steroids, but I heard I heard some scientific facts that it does sharpen your motor skills um, a oh, little bit it. as well. You know what but I'm saying? You, so it, it gives you. It gives you that. Yeah, you get that roid rage. I'm I'm looking at the American Gladiators have this documentary on. Remember American Gladiators from 89 to 94? They got a documentary on how steroids, drugs, women is actually pretty awesome. But what I've been learning about steroids in just the last three days is that it's, it's physical effects too. Um, You know, uh, it, it it it's a thing called roid rage where yeah. because there's so much testosterone, um, inside of you that's trying to, you know what I'm saying? Uh, we never seen him do that. They said you got, you get uh, acne, real bad acne on your back yeah. and your face start breaking out. So, I mean, and again, that was in the 80s with the steroids. Who knows how things have... This is the part where I get on baseball because I was covering the Rangers during that time. Okay. And baseball, and baseball, baseball was suffering. Because they just came off a strike. And then all of a sudden, you start seeing the long balls going out with Mark McGuire. Yep. You start seeing it with Sammy Sosa. You start with Barry Bonds. And baseball did profit off of that. Yes, people they were did. actually going back to the ballpark. And people like you and me, I'm talking about because, you know, we don't, we're not into baseball like that. We love football. We love basketball. We're not into baseball like we're into the other two sports. But shout out but to people, the Rangers, though. But People, I know they're in first place. People were actually <laughs> watching, watching baseball during that time. They were actually breaking away from sometime your television um, sitcom to see Barry Bonds. Yep. And it's at his it's, it's time at the plate or Sammy Sosa or Mark McGuire. Baseball was huge then. Should he be in the Hall of Fame? Yes. But I think with all those guys in that during that time, even though he wasn't convicted. To make people happy, just put an asterisk by it and be happy with it and be move on. But put him in the Hall of Fame. He because what he did with the Pirates, he still had he was still putting up some Hall of Fame numbers during that time. Exactly. He was killing he was him killing me. Bobby, Bobby, Bobby Bonilla at the time. Oh yeah, Bobby Bonilla. Bobby Bonilla was yeah. they was out there. Bonds funny. and Bonilla, Come the killer on. bees. For somebody yeah. who don't yeah, for somebody who don't know baseball, you you made everybody remember just now. That's yeah. funny. Hey, that was hey, to, Bobby Bonilla had the greatest baseball contract of all time. He's still he getting paid a million dollars. Still getting paid for the match. He's getting paid today, probably while we talking. While we talking, right. <laughs> he's still getting paid. Love so it. Barry Bonds, Barry Bonds should be in. I mean, Mark McGuire was convicted, wasn't in. I think uh, Sammy Sosa, those guys shouldn't be in. But I, I think Barry Bonds, you weren't convicted. I still think you look like you're on steroids. We, I'm not we went to there. court. And yeah. you lost, according to the United States judicial system, you cannot serve me double jeopardy. And, and right is. now, Major League Baseball is giving them double jeopardy. So, Major League Baseball, y'all suck. All right. All on agree. that note. <laughs> I we all agree. I guess we all agree on Harry Bunch. Yeah, that's, for that that's, reason. That's for dirty. that reason. Yeah. <laughs> Well, all right, the homies podcast coming to a close, man. Hope y'all got something out of it. Rock TZ is who I BZ. Which is it's Ralph, your boy Griff. Ralph President. Right there. Wow. Well, right. Yeah, it's your boy Griff, aka every little step I take, aka uh don't be cruel, aka Mr. Telephone Man. And I hate the homies. <laughs> and this is your boy Super Day. <laughs> Go ahead. <laughs> I'm Bill. And, and right, go ahead and say something. I know what you're gonna do, Griff. Go ahead and do something. I know you got something to say. Go. On. This is your boy, Super Dave, <laughs> and I just want you to know: every time you look around, I'm somewhere in your house. <laughs> Believe that. Maybe <laughs> under a counter, like a roach. Maybe in the couch cushions, like an ant. I'm somewhere that you'll never know. So pay attention. But guess and what? I hate it. But guess what? But guess what? We, we don't, don't care. care. <laughs> Super Dave Dominion. <laughs> Deuces. Two fingers, y'all. Ah, I hate the homies. <laughs> <laughs>